What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to talk about Tesla and the rumor about them introducing vehicle to grid technology as a feature for their vehicles. This has been heating up. Now, you know, had an amazing video about it. I put out a recent video about it, basically swirling around uh, the rumors about this new uh, leaked slide from a Jeff Don presentation from a couple weeks ago, where he implied that the new million mile batteries that is rumored to go into Tesla's would be capable of being grid tied um, and basically balancing the grid and being able to charge um, when the grid had excess energy and that utilities could potentially pay Tesla customers for this feature. So vehicle to grid is a technology that's been in the Nissan Leaf and been in Mitsubishi cars. You know, other electric vehicles have it. Essentially, instead of your car just being able to charge itself, it can also upload that energy back to the grid um, and, you know, kind of optimize, you know, when electricity rates are low, I can charge. When the grid needs more energy, I can discharge. So it's been, uh, you know, sort of academically a very powerful use case and theory of why electric vehicles are going to be so important and are a much better solution for our transportation system. Tesla stayed very quiet on this. Elon Musk was like, eh, we might do it one day. It just didn't make sense. My theory is this has all to do um, with the, the warranty. You know, Tesla's current batteries go to 300 to 500,000 miles, um, you know, and they have a warranty uh, related to that. Um, and so, you know, if you start charging your car, uh, you know, to the grid and start balancing the grid and using your battery to do that, then your battery could degrade faster and it might actually impact, you know, your usefulness of the car if you're ruining the battery to just do the grid. But now with this new million mile battery, um, that'll solve a huge piece of the problem. It seems like the big breakthrough with Tesla's new technology is the degradation for each cycle is dramatically reduced. The longevity of the, the battery is greatly increased, far beyond what you would need for the average life of a vehicle. Therefore, it also opens up the opportunity to duly use your vehicle's battery pack um, as some sort of energy storage system for your home. You know, right now, Tesla sells its power wall for about $7,000 or $8,000 that stores a certain amount of energy. Um, and that the whole purpose of that is just to be a battery for your home. Well, Tesla's vehicles have about five to six times as much energy storage. Um, they're basically just a huge power wall, but with wheels. And so then we got a very interesting report out of Electric um, after I released my video saying that Tesla quietly adds bi-direction capability for game-changing new features, um, and they basically confirmed that there was hardware in the vehicles that would basically allow them to do the bi-directional charging. Electric even points out um, that they found this filing with the Texas Electric Utility Commission, where Tesla sort of goes into detail about its vehicle-to-grid ambitions, saying vehicle-to-grid benefits can be recognized much more efficiently when EV deployment is at scale rather than in the early adopter phase. At the same time, any discussion regarding the capabilities of EV-related technologies must recognize as a first principle that the customer experience and willingness for participation is key, there certainly may be an opportunity for future projects and programs that focus on advanced technical integration, such as the eventual aggregation of EVs in the future to provide grid services in wholesale markets. In any setting, it is important to remember that EVs are modes of transportation first and foremost for customers. There is also an opportunity to evaluate stationary storage assets first to provide similar grid services capabilities from a wholesale electricity perspective. So, you know, a lot of sort of business jargon there, great find by Electrek, but basically saying like, okay, as electric vehicles get, you know, more mainstream and basically kind of hinting at as the battery technology gets better, then it'll make sense to do vehicle to grid, but we don't want to impact that consumer experience. So I think that's the reason why Tesla has not unveiled this yet. But once again, that new million mile battery sort of unlocks that degradation problem or solves it. And now Tesla is able to offer this feature, um, which I think has a ton of different uses. And I was actually on the phone with Sandy Monroe um, earlier today to talk to him about this because he in an email had said that he had also found um, on the circuit board indications that Tesla was able to do bi-directional charging on its vehicles. He actually told me on the phone that he reached out to Tesla about this and they denied that they were actually planning to do it and wouldn't really tell him anything about it, wouldn't confirm that they had plans to do it. But once again, his engineers um, basically saying we find that bi bi-directional charging capability. Now we have, you know, uh, Electrek reporting the same thing. So I think this is very, very interesting. And you add in the Jeff Don thing. And so I've been doing more and more research on what the implications of vehicle to grid could have, why this is a big deal. Huge shout out to subscribers. Eric Hall, who left me an awesome comment about this and was able to hop on the phone with me to describe this. He's actually working in the industry. Um, and he brought up something that I have not really seen mentioned anywhere, which is the dispatch curve. And this idea really helped me understand why there is so much potential in what Tesla is doing by bringing more energy storage assets online to the grid. Um, this is a chart. Uh, it's a little bit old, but it still gets the the, the 
the main point very clearly here. This is called the dispatch curve. So essentially, the, the grid is only wired for a certain amount of energy. As you start to expand beyond this like planned capacity of, of demand, the incremental energy to add to the grid becomes extremely more expensive. And as you can see in the chart, it's almost like a hockey stick curve there. Um, after that 120 system uh, gigawatt capacity in this particular case, um, you know, the prices, the variable operating costs is soaring, you know, incrementally hundreds of percent up um, for these new incremental power sources because the energy company in the grid is saying like, oh my God, the grid is about to break. We have too much uh, demand for power. We just need, we're going to pay absurd amounts. We'll pay basically whatever it takes to get this new energy online. And so that people are putting this energy online. But so on one end, there's a massive price arbitrage to this where imagine if you could just tap into lithium ion battery cells instead of tapping in and firing up these very, you know, costly peaker plants, um, they could react way faster, they could be way cleaner, and in theory, they could be way cheaper because this has gotten so out of hand that the pricing in some of these, you know, peak rates is absurd and it's actually a huge revenue opportunity. And that's why in the places where the energy prices are the highest, and this is the biggest problems, we're already seeing Tesla come in and wage huge contracts for this technology. The Hornsdale Battery Reserve in Australia um, was the biggest battery in the world. Um, that's been the first place where they've installed their uh, auto bidder software, which is basically an automated AI energy trader to optimize and monetize your battery assets. Um, and the whole point of that was to replace peaker plants. And the study showed that not only um, was it able to save a ton of money um, while operating the battery was way cheaper than firing up these dirty fossil fuel plants to supplement the grid, but it actually responded in a way faster time. So cheaper and actually a much better product, like the time to respond because it's electronic with the lithium ion battery is way faster than actually physically firing up one of these dirty plants. So we have cheaper, faster, cleaner. This is a way better uh, way to, to handle this I mean, when I learned about what we do with the grid, it's like, okay, the grid only has so much energy. If we are reach capacity, we have to start firing up all these super pollutive extra peaker plants. It just seems like a horrible system. Um, and so batteries are the missing puzzle piece to really allow um, the grid to expand and have that flexibility to take on renewables. And and we're seeing that the cost of the cost of battery goes down. It finally is making economic sense. That's why Hornsdale did it. That's why we saw a massive uh project in the works with PG&E potentially. This was a couple years ago. I think this has been delayed because of troubles with PG&E, but I also just wanted to point out that right after Australia works, one of the largest utilities in California is trying to replace all their peaker plants with batteries too. My point is the economics of this are coming, and this was all before Tesla unveiled its Maxwell battery cell, which we think they're going to make for way cheaper. So if you think Tesla's already winning big business here, and then they get that battery cost even cheaper, um, this could you know really turbocharge their energy business. And this is the point where I wanted to tie back to all of this and get to the revenue opportunity here because uh, a lot of uh, Tesla shareholders have been scratching our head. Elon Musk keeps touting the potential of the energy business, saying it could be as big as the car business. Um, it's going to grow much faster, yet that has failed to materialize as Tesla's been constrained on battery cells um, and just on resources in general. They haven't been able to focus as much and the growth has lagged in that energy division, although it's been doing great on its own. And uh, Drew uh, Baglino on last conference call, one of the Tesla executives mentioned how um, they would be talking, he was asked about this and said they would mention a lot more about the ramp of energy storage products and be a lot more clear at Battery Investor Day, which got me thinking like, hmm, well, maybe, okay, if they can build more batteries, then they can build more power walls and sell more of them. Maybe that's just the problem, but maybe there's more to it than that. Maybe there's an actual software option they're going to launch, which enables vehicle to grid for your Teslas with these new batteries, um, and then turns all of this network of Teslas into a virtual power plant. Um, and then that is how this you know energy storage business takes off for Tesla. Another thing that got me scheming on this is in the electric article, they found this presentation from like 2015, where JB Straubel notes that in 2019, they're going to have a million Teslas on the road, almost exactly accurate which is pretty epic. Um, and they're going to have 75 gigawatt hours of storage, 10 gigawatt controllable load, basically hinting that this connected vehicle fleet could be a massive energy storage asset for the grid as they start to hit a million vehicles. This seems to be the milestone where we go from early adopters to mainstream for the technology. And it makes sense with economies of scale. There's enough Teslas on the road to launch some of these virtual power practices programs to leverage that new auto bidder software. Um, my theory is if the Model 3 and Model Y already have this bi-directional charging capability, the only thing that you need to do is have maybe a wall, a wall, uh, a high powered wall charger with some sort of inverter in it. Maybe it's a little more expensive. Some people think this could already be integrated in a Tesla's inverters. I don't know enough about that. So if you do leave it in the comments below, but it doesn't sound like that much incremental cost for a very powerful feature. And ARK Invest, one of my favorite uh, analysts there, Sam Chorus, who's actually been on HyperChange. And we've talked about this, put out amazing research about peaker plants um, uh, about a year ago. 
and was saying that this is a 10 uh, to $12 billion opportunity per year just in the US for Tesla. Eventually, globally, could be an $800 billion opportunity and gives these really fascinating charts showing that as the price of battery comes down, uh, it makes more and more economic sense for these batteries to replace more and more peaker plants. They even have this really cool chart of like natural gas um, generation uh, distributed by how much it's utilized. You know, the these plants that are utilized less than 25% of the time, it already makes sense to do that energy storage um, as these battery cost comes down. And this is a huge, huge deal in terms of a revenue opportunity from Tesla and solving a direly needed problem of our electric grid, which is it's not modernized. It desperately needs storage capacity. Um, and now Tesla, which just under our noses has been selling all these cars, essentially massive batteries, now has a million of them all around the world, maybe in theory could just flip a switch with its software, sell a little bit of an inverter and unlock this massive vehicle to grid feature. That's one of my theories. The other one is, you know, maybe they wait until uh, the new battery cell really gets commercialized um, and into cars because, you know, you need that. So the degradation um, doesn't impact this too much. So maybe it doesn't, vehicle to grid doesn't happen until the Cybertruck. That's another theory. Or maybe vehicle to grid happens, you know, right now and a new Plaid Model S, and that's the thing that Elon wants to show on stage, which is why he's delaying battery day. I don't know. Would love to know what you think in the comments below, um, but I think this vehicle-to-grid software um, is a huge deal um, because it's going to it's gonna really help with this dispatch curve problem that the grid is facing, um, and while it solves that problem for the grid, it turns uh, these batteries and cars that Tesla has into a massive revenue opportunity, whether Tesla gets all of that, whether they split that with the owners, whether they make that cheaper for you to buy a car because you're leasing the battery that they can monetize. I don't know, but this is exciting. This is a game changer. We're going to find out a lot more. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Huge shout out to Eric Hale for taking the time to talk to me. It was super interesting. Um, and thank you to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun on the channel. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.